Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of grace. Yeah, yeah, I give myself that when I use that for workouts. I'm like, well, yeah. I walked up my driveway, so yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. 20 seconds. Plus, I got, I got out of bed this morning. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> and with that, welcome to the Afterthoughts Podcast question and answer or Q&A I will. edition. Every year on the Afterthoughts Podcast <laughs> for our April Fool's episode, the very first episode of April, we always do an entire episode of questions with Kayla. Hey, oh my goodness. What? Are you ready? Let's go. Yes, I'm very ready. You have 20 plus questions. I have, to, yeah, 20 we're gonna plus. We're going to get through all of them. We'll see how we're many. Gonna try, yeah, we we're going to try. Yeah, we're just going to do some fire. rapid fire. Before yeah. we get to your questions, though, okay. a couple of things of note. Uh, Doug is no longer with us. Chris. Yeah. <laughs> for this week, he's in Arizona. RIP. Yes, he went to be. <laughs> In Arizona. Yes. yes. Arizona. Are you feeling okay without your older brother? You know what? I Without the covering of Doug, it's it's quite all right. Or maybe it's more fun. It's, you don't have to deal with your older we're brother. We're having a great time this you're, week. You're in at the party. He's out in the field like, hmm, why does Ryan get to be at Always, the party? Always, dude. Kind of typical older Gosh. brother. Gosh. Yes. And Clark is just like, well, everything I have is yours. Yeah, Doug. Just what is chill the out, man. Ryan's my favorite, though. <laughs> totally. Also, it's uh, baseball season. Yes. I'm wearing my Rockies day. gear. The Rockies have a chance this year. Mm. To be not just the worst team in baseball, mm-hmm. but the worst team ever. Yeah. <laughs> I genuinely yeah. think. We could set a record. We could, they, there's a highlight going around this week. Just a, It's bad, man. A single to the outfield that just rolls past a guy. Another oh, error. It's just, so it's just shocking how bad we are. No hitting. But. It's bad. They are my lifelong team, as they are yours. I'm wearing my purple. So. Oh, nice. Go Rockies. Go Rockies. That doesn't One mean anything. <laughs> doesn't One matter. in five. One and four? Yeah, we're off to a bad start. Off to and a, we, will, we will see that to Or fruition. is that a good start if we're trying to set the record? Yeah, we, we could lose yeah. probably 120 games this year. We really <laughs> might be able to do that. Should we, let's do, let's put the over 100. 100. Yeah, I'm it's going over. hammer the over. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, March Madness, UConn, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> Dude, I had a nearly perfect bracket until Yeah, you did, this past you did weekend. well until Duke lost. And then Duke lost. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, the Lady Buffs were eliminated. But on the plus side, Warren Sapp is now officially on staff as a coach so awesome. at CU, which is great. So there's your sports so updates. Great. We know some of you watch for the sports. I talked to a girl this weekend that was like, I don't really know about sports. And so I thought about always skipping that part of your podcast, but now I'm learning a couple of things. Yeah, so. there you go. We do it for the people. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're here for him. Um, so no Doug today. Yes. So we'll be able to actually have you think you we're know, gonna be solid right? conversation and good answers. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we have, I mean, we've had guests for weeks and yeah, weeks and weeks, time. so it yeah. feels it feels very uh, calm and empty. It's, it's kind of nice. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Yeah, uh, Easter weekend was awesome, by the way. We had a crazy. We had eight services. Yeah, uh, two Good, two Friday, Good Friday, Friday services. Six, six here, one up in the prison at our Murray yes. Unit campus, which was incredible. Would you call that? Well, let me ask you. Favorite part of Easter? Okay, Ethan. <laughs> Yes, that service. I got to preach up at our prison campus. And Seems it's, like it was, it was awesome. incredible in there. So many. There was what? like half the room that's just on fire yeah. and half the room that's showing up very like arms crossed. Why am I? I like, have something to do, so I'm coming, but mm. I don't know how I feel about all this. Mm. And that message, I preached the same story of Lazarus. Um, to be able to say that Jesus cares to yeah. a group of ladies in prison, like he wept with them because he truly cares and he knows pain and he knows what you're going through he can relate to you in that Mm. that just to me like that brings the gospel to be even more powerful in my life to get to communicate it to a room of people that feel like god's done with me he doesn't want anything to do with me and to tell them it's actually quite the opposite unreal and there were nine ladies who put their faith in jesus i got to pray with a bunch of ladies it was incredible yeah so fun probably the most fun i've ever had preach you were fired up when you got back to the church so fun so great. What about you? Best Easter moment. Sorry, um, Kayla, we're taking your bit asking each other questions. Fine. Very similar. Uh, thanks for asking, Kayla. Yeah. Um, <laughs> walking through the lobby in the middle of Easter, you know how crazy it gets, especially on Easter weekend. <laughs> yep. And a lady stopped me and she was feeling really nervous. She was she was uh, a little shy. She pulled me aside to the corner and then we start talking and she's just got tears in her eyes. And her husband is in prison mm. and there's an app where he can listen to our sermons. Yeah. And she goes, I just want to say thank you wow. for these sermons because he listens every week. He's like, he's always sending me like, listen to this one next and this one next wow. and this one next. And that was like in the middle of all the chaos. It was a cool reminder that God, God's working in so many ways. So many ways. It's crazy. That's, yeah, it's fun to be a part of it. It was an awesome weekend and a bunch of people came to meet Jesus, which is what it's all yeah. about. That's why we do what we Wild. do. Uh, well, the clock is going. Oh boy. <laughs> 20 plus questions with Kayla. 
Let's get into it. Ethan and Ryan, author of Single Today Edition. <laughs> I feel good. I feel, the shout out, I feel man. good answering questions with an author. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not a an guy, author. He, he he can authorize many things. I won't be for 20 more days, <laughs> Ethan. But so, but yeah. it's coming up. Oh, it's speaking up. of coming up, two more things. Yes. Corey is doing a wor- Corey Miller worship night. Let's go mm-hmm. next Friday, Friday, April 12th. Get your tickets now. Get your tickets now. There is a promo code that I forgot about. <laughs> yes. Afterthoughts. And I meant to mention this in March, <laughs> but somebody figured it out. Kayla That's saw that. Sarah somebody Cobb. actually must have just tried promo codes or else I said it and forgot it. That's yeah. an insane story to me. I but love it. I think it's $5 off. If you're Congratulations. A listener, whoever did that. promo code. If you already bought a ticket, I apologize. But the money just goes to help cover costs for them to yeah. all come down here. It's going to be so an incredible it. night of worship. And mm-hmm. then we also have a new believer course. We had some of the questions yes. that we got asked for very much, I think, an audience of people that's trying to navigate a relationship with Jesus. I'm yeah. new to faith. Questions about some of the fundamentals of faith, mm-hmm. and that class starts Tuesday, April 9th. Yeah. It's going to be the four Tuesday nights in April. So I want to invite people to that as well. Absolutely. And with all of that said, Kayla, the begin. Done. All right. First <sighs> question. Super, super hard. Super serious. What's your go-to karaoke song? Friends in Low Places. Garth Brooks. I once saw you sing a Backstreet Boy song with Beach at. Uh, I did do that too. Karaoke. When I when when Beach is there with me and he can carry it, we'll go like boy band era. Yeah. But when it's not, I have to go with the low country songs because nice. it makes me sound a little less bad. Okay. <laughs> okay. Still bad. The last time I sang karaoke, I sang uh, that Lou Bega song, remember, Mambo Number Five. I remember that. Not didn't go well. <laughs> I thought it was great. I really when I think about karaoke, I would like to sing a Chris Stapleton song. I can't sing. Yeah. But I like. White Horse would be a really fun character. Yeah, if you could. I could try. It nice. would be terrible, but... Good. Okay? Good. All right, another fun one. One down. We're Woo, so easy. This, this is easy. Easy, easy peasy. Done. <laughs> How many people... Oh, there's a lot of people that submitted questions. There is a lot. Okay. So shout out we're to all those shout people. Shout out to everybody if that submitted. we don't submitted. get to your question, yes, we're sorry. We're, we're going to try as many as we can. Yes, we are. Oh, what is your Chick-fil-A order? Uh, grilled chicken with two Chick-fil-A sauces, waffle fries. Wow. Uh, I've really been a Cobb salad guy. Those those cop salads, it's basically oh. chicken nuggets on a salad. It's one of the is best salads. Is that because of Sarah Cobb who used the promo code? Is that the shout out? <laughs> yeah, she's Sarah, the promo full code. Circle. Shout out to Sarah Cobb. and shout out to Tori's group. Tori and Morgan's Tori group. Tori and Morgan's Morgan. group. Yes. Tori and Morgan's group. Thanks after for watching, thoughts, listeners. Yes. Shout out to your whole group. Thanks shout for out. submitting questions. Yes. Thanks yes. for being Afterthoughts family. Yes. Use that promo code just like <laughs> <laughs> the Cobster. The co- <laughs> Yeah, keep going. Uh, all right. So speaking of things coming up, yeah. we have baptism. Yes. And we have a few questions on this. So okay. How do you know when you should be baptized? When is the right time? Ooh, great question. That's mm-hmm. a great question. So um, the big, the first and biggest thing to remember is that if perfection was a prerequisite for getting baptized, none of us would ever get baptized. And so I, I feel like we play the morality game where it's like, well, you know, like I'll, I'll put away that bad vice for two weeks and then I'll be ready to be baptized. And that's just completely missing the point. Yeah. We are, you are signing up to be an imperfect person pursuing a perfect God the rest of your life. You're ready to get baptized the moment you're ready to say, no, I need Jesus to be my savior instead of trying to save myself. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. If you've put your faith in Jesus and you haven't been baptized and you are committed to that relationship, then now is the time to get baptized. I think it's for some people kind of like engagements Mm -hmm. where sometimes an engagement goes on for so long that you're like, hey... You guys were saying you're going to get married. Just get married yeah. at this point. Yeah. And we wait for like that perfect moment. It's like at some point you're going to have to dive in. And I'm not telling people to rush into marriage. I'm just saying that we we wait for the perfect moment that's never going to come. Yeah. It's more about right. your commitment into it. And I think for some yeah. people, baptism might be that needed catalyst to say, this is going to push me to go all in in my Good. faith too, because I'm going to come out of those waters ready to walk in the life that I've already received. It's going to be so. such a great weekend. May 4th and 5th. Man, we're doing a good job promoting upcoming yeah, stuff. Good job, guys. So smooth without Doug. Uh, May 4th, okay. so May the 4th. I'm going to say Jesus every time we you. baptize someone. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, <laughs> may, <laughs> and May the 4th be with yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody will be really upset about that. Star Wars is actually spiritually dark. Okay. Fine. Uh, we'll but only the, re- the red lightsaber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but there is a gospel narrative. Okay. <laughs> okay. Continue. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh yes. Step. Um, so somebody said, "I'm struggling with giving up control Oof. and giving it to God. It's a hard concept to learn." I saw a few questions about surrender. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude. Kind of go it's that. so easy. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah, hard. yeah, yeah. Used to it. It's just the hardest okay. thing in the world. There's going to be a few points where, and it's going to feel self-promoting to us, but we have preached sermons on some of this yeah. stuff in our right side up series a few years ago. I want to say what year? Two years ago? Two, two and a half years yeah. ago? Yeah. 
two years. I preached a sermon called Surrender in a Control, Control Freak, Freak World, world. Yeah. that I would recommend just because I learned a lot through that process and had a lot of good conversations with people out of it. So good. But for helpful stuff right now, we go to Ryan, author of Single Today. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do think, not to bring it back to my book, but so much of what I've been thinking about these days is the invitation from Jesus to not worry about tomorrow, but mm-hmm. to be present today. It's yeah. like the whole like through line of the book. And so I, I think a good helpful starting point when it comes to control is re-centering yourself and refocusing on just winning today hmm. um, and going, okay, there's a whole bunch of stuff coming up tomorrow and weeks from now and years from now that honestly, I'm not there yet. So I'm yeah. gonna cross that bridge when I get to it. What is right here present in my life today? Yeah. And you might find it like 10 times easier to just surrender that thing hmm. that you have right in front yeah. of you. Yeah, you don't have to boil the ocean one piece at a time. Ed Long. Um, Also, I think for a lot of people, surrender feels like you're giving up Mm. when really you're gaining through surrender because God has better for you than you have for yourself. Good. Mm -hmm. And it's scary because when you can control, you can kind of see what your outcome is going to be, but God has a better outcome for you. And with that perspective, you can start placing things into his hands, knowing he's a good father who has good plans, who wants good for you. Um, The other thing is, it's kind of grace and surrender both always remind us of the forgetting Sarah Marshall, that surfing scene Mm -hmm. where he's trying to learn to surf and um, Paul Rudd's like, okay, you're doing too much. Like don't do anything. So he just lays on the surfboard and he's like, okay, well you have to do something. And it's like, do I do something or do I not do something? Mm -hmm. Cause I'm going to put the control in God's hands. But I think somebody even alluded to like, but I still have to do my part. Yeah. And I think Mm -hmm. that's finding obedience and faithfulness in what God has called you to do. And that comes back to the fundamentals of like, are you spending time in his word praying, listening to him and letting him guide you into your decisions? Are you inviting him into those spaces? Because that is your part, is to allow the presence of God to come into those parts of your life that you're holding like this and open your hands with them over and over and over again. Um, But a lot of times I think we're like, oh, I'm trying to surrender to God, but we're actually not. Yeah, We're just keep doing the same thing the way we want to do it, but we're saying that we're trying to surrender to God when the reality is we need to have like deep time with him where Mm -hmm. we write those things out lay those things before him and let him in uh, to guide us in those decisions. That's so good. So surrender should always lead to obedience. On the other side of surrender is action steps to take. Mm -hmm. And taking those steps of obedience is not retaking control. Yeah, It can't turn into that, but it's actually a beautiful thing. It's the fruit of surrender. Yeah, God calls us to action. And if you have some accountability surrounding you of some Mm -hmm. people who love you and are fighting for you, but are going to help be like, hey, yeah. It kind of seems like you've grabbed relationships back and yeah. you're dating somebody that we, you know isn't good for you or you're back into the world of hookups on apps or whatever and you haven't you're not living a surrendered life right now. Good. Coming from a place of be, we want better for you, that's always helpful because it's really easy to isolate yourself into those parts of your life and then kind of take control back. That's so good. And then you push people away. So I keep real around quick. That. I keep seeing the picture of the disciples dropping their nets. Mm -hmm. In Matthew 4, when Jesus initially called them, come follow me, there was so much control they had to let go of. But as soon as they let go of that control, all of a sudden they start being a part of like the most amazing ministry of all time. And so to double down on your point, God has more for you. You're not giving something up by letting go of control. You're actually setting yourself up for God to do something even bigger in your life. That was great. And to use Tori and Morgan's group (laughs) as an example of this, because they're our favorite group at at the Thoughts Podcast. If that group goes around... And every single one of them is honest and says, here's parts of my life that I have seized control of. Mm. And here's what's the outcomes of those. Mm. And they're able to start helping encourage each other and push each other <sighs> to, okay, let's, what does it look like to open your hands with that yeah. and truly let God have that place in your life? We, we have done that. The biggest one for me was relationships. And when yeah. I finally was like, I got to stop doing this my way. Yeah. Uh, I got to stop dating people that aren't aligned with me mm-hmm. on the faith thing that don't mm-hmm. have the same foundation. I got to stop hooking up and going mm-hmm. out and just looking for that. I got to take this seriously and actually be a man of God in a relationship. It changed everything. It for changed you. everything. And then mm-hmm. it's not a formula, but when you're ready for that type of relationship, you would find somebody who's also ready for that. Then you Dude. build what you're actually looking it for. It really, your story really is cool with that because you met Steph like right around that time. Yeah. And had to surrender her. Yeah, that's right. Because she wasn't really interested to date when we first met. That's and right. And I had to delete her phone number and had to say, God, I'm... I'm not going to force this. Ah. I'm going to wait on your timing and I'm going to obviously play my part. If I get the chance to talk to her again or whatever, I will assert that I'm interested, Yeah, but I'm not going to try to force or control this. That's in your book, Married Today, right? Is that chapter two? (laughs) Married forever. (laughs) Until we die because there is no marriage in the resurrection, which is probably (laughs) Steph's least favorite part of the Bible. (laughs) 
<laughs> All right. That was All two right. minutes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That was really good. Some of these are more serious, yeah, you know? Yeah, we gotta yeah. give, it, yeah. we gotta give go a decent on. answer. Yeah, yeah. So here's a silly one. Sock, shoe, sock, shoe, sock, sock, shoe, shoe. What are sock, you? Sock, sock, shoe, shoe. Yes. It, ah. It's insane. If you put on a, your <laughs> left sock and your left shoe before you put on your right sock. Yeah. Well, are I you also, doing left or right first or right or left? What are you doing first? Well, it depends on which one's right. Ah. I, I think I go left foot because I'm left-handed. What about you, Ryan? Left. Are you left-handed too? No. Dude, <laughs> solidarity. It's in solidarity. There's not as many of us out my boy there, so e. thank you. Appreciate yeah, that. I got you. Appreciate the support. I also, here's a weird thing. I think in the warm part of the year, I don't put my socks on right until I'm about to put my shoes on. But in the cooler parts of the year, I probably put my socks on well before I put shoes on. Yeah. So, That's fair. Yeah. You get that. So yeah. pray for me. I'm okay. trying to figure this whole sock shoe thing. Uh, okay, yeah. God, we pray. <laughs> um, next question. All right, next question. Uh, we got to laugh out of this one. How do dinosaurs fit in God's story? Dressed, hashtag Jurassic Park. Oh, dude, you got to tell your story. Oldham. Have you told it on this podcast? The Jurassic Park story of my childhood? Yeah. Um, yeah, I can tell that. Right no, there. no, no. The the standing up in, your, in the class that you were in? For continental drifting? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> if, unless you don't want to. No, that's fine. I'm just, there's multiple stories about dinosaurs. I wanted to be a dinosaur as a kid. That like was when Z. people asked me what I wanted to be. I genuinely... <laughs> wanted that and i think my son does now yeah what kind i was big velociraptor guy wow. zeke is the t-rex till he dies guy he's yeah. obsessed with t-rexes but <laughs> yeah my brother and i jurassic park came out when we were kids and we were obsessed with getting to see jurassic park but my mom knew it would be too scary for us so when it came out on vhs which kayla was an old tape that you put in a thing <laughs> called a vcr <laughs> <laughs> you were just making fun of us for when we were talking about YouTube in college and you're yes. like, oh yeah, I was in sixth grade or whatever. No, no, okay. No, no. <laughs> anyway, so my mom finally was like, okay, you guys can watch Jurassic Park, but you have to watch it in fast forward. So good. Oh. <laughs> so we watched Jurassic Park in like 20 minutes and it was like just were you, fly, was like, like <laughs> watching the dinosaurs. Yeah. Like that guy just got eaten that. Were, you were narrating it? Like we were you were trying, trying to, yeah, what's, to figure out what's going together. on. And, That's oh, actually so amazing. Um, but... People get, so evolution and conversations around the Bible and dinosaurs, a lot of these things uh -huh. can be really hot topics and there's probably more important things to talk about. But I went to this thing my mom took us to about dinosaurs and the Bible and it was like this teaching of how it all could align and stuff like that. But it was very anti-evolution. And then I went to sixth grade outdoor education and I didn't really know like what all fit into these categories and stuff. And so the camp counselor was talking about continental drifting, <laughs> Pangea. Oh, yeah. And I just in front of like my group, I was like, I don't believe that. Such I, don't a believe, I don't believe in Pangea. Like that goes against my faith. Up. And I just remember that counselor looking at me like, goes against your faith? Like <laughs> that the continents might drift over time? Like, don't you see how so this looks good. like a puzzle that fits yeah. together? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't believe I did. That. I was. That's okay. But that's probably a good example of people that get very hung up on things. Not to say that that's a bad question because a no, lot of no, people no. ask about dinosaurs. A lot of people ask Ryan about dinosaurs. <laughs> a lot of people ask me about that in Flat Earth. It just I just mm. have to spend so much time. Um, here, here's what I'll say. First off, this is, I would say, not even a secondary issue. It's like a third level, level issue. Yeah. However, there are both young Earth creationists and old Earth creationists mm -hmm. underneath the umbrella of Christianity, people who take the Bible very seriously, who believe it's the inspired word of God. Um, and if you are like a young earth creationist would say that the earth is about six to 10,000 years old, an old earth creationist would put it, it's always changing, but around like 4.2 billion or something like right. that um, might be something that would be a good starting point for you to dive into um, and research and read the different views. There's a couple of good books that, that point out the like a young earth creationist will make a point, then an old earth creationist mm -hmm. will rebuttal. And so if you're interested in the debate, that's a great starting point. Yeah. One of the one time Ryan got asked, I was just part of the conversation about, well, why doesn't the Bible talk about dinosaurs? And Ryan was like, well, why would the Bible talk about dinosaurs? <laughs> and they're like, I don't know, like that's part of history. And he wasn't being rude about it. He was like, but the Bible is the story of God. Yeah. That leads to be about Jesus. And that's the point of our scriptures. And so there's, yeah, there's a lot, like there's people that are literal seven day creationists and people mm -hmm. that say, well, one day is a million in God's economy, whatever, like, is yeah. it seven actual days of the week? Like we think of, or was God creating over a long period of time that he described his days? Yeah. There's a lot of different views that should be able to be a conversation that doesn't be a house of cards that makes people not believe the Bible anymore. And that's the big thing is don't let this topic uh, hinder your evangelism at all. Yes. And your witness and yeah. your your ability to explain the gospel. Yeah. And uh, like if, if you're d debating with somebody or having a conversation with somebody, don't die on that hill. 
die on the death resurre- and resurrection yes. and ascension of Jesus. Yes. Mm-hmm. The Bible's not a science textbook. That's right. Very good. All right. Thanks. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> was that, that, that kind of thing? That, that was, was a fun question. question. That was kind of a question. <laughs> She's like, all right. Okay. Yeah, that was mine. <laughs> Don't ask about the dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, next question. If you had not become a pastor, what would you be doing instead? Ooh. Pat McAfee has my dream job. Yeah. Outside of what I get to do, because I do love my job. But I always wanted to work for ESPN. Sports journalism was my jam and world. And so to get to host a show like his, mm-hmm. that's not just like talking head sports, but it's fun and yeah. like has bits. Interactive. And crazy. Yeah, that's. Dude, you would be so good at that. Yeah. Pat, if you're out there and you ever need a, a guy to fill in or just come join you yeah. for that's for some reason. The Ethan Matat show. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, I would be in the NBA. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, Easy. cool. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> still thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're still fresh because you never did. You're right. So I could turn yeah. in my, my application. Yeah. yeah. See if the Nuggets will take so me. my brother always says, <laughs> I send my application to the Rockies <laughs> yeah. every year and they never hire me to play on the team. <laughs> he would probably fit. Hey, he could. That yeah. He might. Yeah. Take, yeah. Might as well. This year. Uh, next question. Um, we had somebody who said, what does God think about dancing? I'm Latin and grew up thinking dancing was a sin. So Dance? maybe oh. just talking about like childhood. Yeah. Which Great older question. generation could relate to because when Elvis and all that was going on, yeah. people were like, this is the devil. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think there was dancing in the Old Testament. And I feel like the Israelites David, had festivals and danced. There's like a whole story about David dancing and worshiping God through it. Almost naked. And, and people being like <laughs> almost embarrassed by like yeah. mm-hmm. how how sold out he was in, in his worship of God. I'll say this, like any good gift um, from God, it's very easy to twist and it's very easy to, um, yeah, let it become something that God never created it to do. This is what the enemy's been doing since the Garden of Eden, is yep. taking good gifts and and twisting it. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the same way that food can be, be twisted and sex can be twisted, dancing can be as well. And I think it's pretty obvious. <laughs> like we can, we can, it's, it's not that hard to, to separate yeah. uh, what dancing is honoring to God. And, and yeah. Overarching dancing is great. It's yeah. a fun thing, but mm-hmm. it can, like you said, it can fall into a category where it becomes very sexual or whatever. And then yeah. it's probably no longer something to sign yeah. off on. Very yeah. good. All right, where do you see Red Rocks Austin in the next five to 10 years? Wow. This is an interview question, so answer Well, right. in Austin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my answer. I see it in Austin. Yeah, that's a great question. We're, on, we're in such a fun spot as a church yeah. where, like, I don't mean this as a cop-out, like, it's so hard to know what God yeah. has in store yes. for us coming up. Yeah, for the logistical minds, I think our hope is to have a permanent location. We want to be in the city of Austin. Like mm-hmm. Doug has mentioned, we don't need a realtor. We need a building. Yeah. Um, so we'd like to have a permanent central place in the city. We really feel like our church, for whatever reason, just has favor to be in the city of Austin, not outside of it. So we want to be close to where we are right now. Um, we're just praying for the right thing to work out for that to be possible. And then maybe expanding to multiple locations. Mm-hmm. There's different modeling and ideas we've had about mm-hmm. how that could work and using technology, but also having multiple voices and preaching and stuff like that. Yeah. So growing in the city of Austin, and I think Red Rocks as a whole in five to 10 years, we just dream of continuing to open up what God's doing through Red Rocks Church. And that might that could could mean other cities. It could mean other states. Who knows yeah. what that looks like. But we... We exist to make heaven more crowded. We want and to do so we're always we going to try to be open to however we can do that the best. Yes. You know, correct. Nice. Yeah. Very good. Um, somebody asked if you could speak on predestination. Ooh. Well, we can point to Doug's sermon. Doug Because that'll be a more, much more sermon. thorough. Mm-hmm. So we did a series yeah. called Pendulum uh, last summer. Yep. And we had an actual pendulum on the stage. It was one of, we, we use that framework all the time in yeah. conversation. Yeah. Um, but Doug gave a sermon called the predestination paradox. I think I so. so. We can I put believe. links in the yeah. uh, caption. What's it, what is that called? Uh, caption? Description. Description. And Cat- he handled yeah. it really well. But <laughs> the, the <caption>. from 30,000 <laughs> feet, um, the, the argument or the conversation is, uh, is God sovereign or do humans have free will specifically to choose whether or not they want to follow God? Um, and you can see how that creates a, a pendulum right there. And Doug did a really good job of helping us think bigger yeah. a, about that paradigm. Yeah. I would just, yeah, listen to that message. I think that'll do far more good for whoever's asking that question than us yeah. trying to re-give that message in two minutes and good. not being able to thoroughly do Very that. Very good. Um, somebody asked, what to do when following God feels like work? Ooh. Good question. That's a phenomenal question. Wow. 
Um, here's my answer. It's supposed to. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I think one of the disservices we do, and I'm totally at fault for this um, as well. Yes. Um, yeah, especially <laughs> yeah. me. Sorry like, about Ryan. It's so much... <laughs> Well, it's about a relationship and God just wants to have a relationship with you. It's not about your works, it's about relationship. And that's completely true. But as I've been told, relationships take work. Um, And (laughs) so I would say like, there's a reason we call them spiritual practices or spiritual disciplines. Just like becoming a better basketball player requires you to work on your game a lot. The same thing is is true with Christianity. Um, And so um, my first answer is just, yeah, welcome to the, to the tradition. It it is a lot of work. And you're probably actually pursuing a relationship if it feels like that. So shout out. So that's actually a good sign. Yeah. I think, I think that's really good what you said that a lot of people get sold that like as soon as you have a relationship with God, like everything just gets easy and awesome. Yeah. But if you read the New Testament, it's like if you read true. the book of Acts, especially yeah. the whole Bible, but the book of Acts, that's not the case. Like there's a yeah. lot of hard parts that come in with following Jesus. There's a he and he said that. You're gonna give up a lot. You have to lose your life to follow me. And that will not always feel easy. But it is like marriage, you know, and there's times where it feels effortless mm-hmm. in my marriage, and there's times where it feels like tremendous amount of work yeah. that mm-hmm. we have to put in. And the yeah. goal, if the goal is to grow closer together, then you start to actually appreciate the work part of it that's good but there's times where it's just difficult but that's a great question and i would encourage that person that i think you are pursuing a relationship if it feels like that sometimes it's good Mm -hmm. and then there will be times where it feels like gosh everything is just easy right now and that's great Mm -hmm. very good um do you guys ever practice your sermons or your jokes in the mirror they want to know a little bit about sermon prep sermon prep's a good question well i can't in the mirror because ray just shattered our story Uh, yeah this morning, Ray was, I was just my one year old. Ray was home and I was trying to get ready. He's just enough, where, like old enough where he can wander around a little bit and I can trust that for two minutes while I take a shower. <laughs> and I heard this really loud crashing sound and he had pushed this mirror over that's in our room. Thankfully, he pushed it and it didn't fall on him yeah, yeah, yeah. and shattered it. So I can't anymore because we don't have a mirror. But no, that not was your... in the, I sit in my car and I'll talk through a sermon, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but not in the mirror. That would just feel weird to look at myself while I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, on Saturdays before Ethan preaches, he's always, I know the exact parking spot he's in. That's the <laughs> leave me alone. I'm practicing my sermon. Yeah. Um, no, for me, I I uh, go on walks, like r- really long walks and practice it out loud. I find that when I'm moving around, mm-hmm. um, it's easier for me to process and it's easier for me to remember. And so um, I walk a lot on sermon, yeah. sermon weeks. Yeah, and it's not for me like also... I think some people think it's just memorizing a speech that I've written out. Say more. That we've written out. But act, like my preparation, I think this is true of anyone who preaches, is not like I'm just trying to remember all the right words that I wrote down on this Word document. I'm trying to talk through it in a way that like how can I communicate this truth of yeah. Jesus in the like whatever this unique message is. So it's more of like a process of preach. I'm like preaching that in my car because I want to like – yeah. I want people. To, I, does that make sense? It's the I'm word. Not a the word we use a lot is internalizing. Yes. So it's that's, that's what I'm. That's what I'm trying. To we're say. not trying to recite. We're trying to internalize the message, and that is the hardest part of yes. sermon prep. We always oh, we'll get right to the now. point where it's like, <laughs> how, how you doing on the sermon? Well, I need to internalize it. Yep. And what that means is, I don't want to just be. I don't want these to be empty words. I want to practice first off what I'm preaching. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to really believe it. And I like I want to get it at a heart level, yeah. not not just up here. Yep. Um, and so yeah, that process is very very painful. <laughs> if anybody <laughs> is interested in preaching, <laughs> it's it just don't. It's something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in yeah. a preaching week, so that I'm just I'm in that space right now. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Of like, okay, I've owe so much stuff. Now, how do I communicate it? Yeah, yeah, good. Appreciate your prayers, Kayla, Jacob. Yes. Thanks, guys. Yeah, here at the top of my prayer list. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> Um, what's your favorite moment of wish, Jesus in the Bible? Wish you didn't say that sarcastically. What? <laughs> <laughs> favorite wish, moment of what? Jesus in the Bible. Which one person in my life wouldn't say that sarcastically? <laughs> favorite moment in general of Jesus? Yeah. Just, just, I mean, for you. the resurrection would be the easy answer for that. Yes. Good yeah, job. Let's take that off. <laughs> More of like a unique <laughs> moment that yeah. maybe isn't like what. Yeah. Um, I've always been drawn to both Zacchaeus and Matthew, um, both tax collectors. And the first thing Jesus doing, uh, sitting down at a table and having a meal with them mm. and saying, it's a, it was a, a first century way of saying, hey, you belong. I love you. We'll get to everything else later. But first, let's have a meal together. That's good. 
Uh, Breakfast on the Beach in John 21 yeah. is so awesome. Resurrected Jesus just hanging out with his guys. We both went with food examples. Yeah. <laughs> I was the other one was going to be the wedding at Cana. Because there's so many layers to it theologically and what Jesus uh, is foreshadowing and pointing to and all the jars and the old ceremonial wash, all that stuff. Yeah. But, but on the top, just surface level of just like Jesus throws a great party. Yeah. That's pointing us to the ultimate party. I just love that. Right. Yeah. Great. I love that. Um, somebody asked, will you guys ever make a series on Revelation and what's going on in the world right now? Oof. Wow. I did a study of Revelation last year if, mm -hmm. and... Matt Chandler did a great series at the Village Church on yes. Revelation, 12 sermons that I would highly recommend if someone is looking for that. I, I don't know if, I mean, that's not in our current plan this year, but we only plan for a year, you know, a year yeah. or less. Um, so certainly not opposed to that. Revelation is fascinating, and I mm -hmm. think most people are intimidated like I was. And a lot of times we also misapply it mm -hmm. right. and make something in that mean something today that it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot to, to learn there. and. Um, and there are things in current events. There's, I'm, I've never been like buy in on the end times crowd of like, yeah. well, we see this, this, and this. Cause I'm always like every generation has thought this was it, Yeah. but I don't have a lot to argue with people right now that are yeah. like, this is it just, just cause the world, so many things that I'm like, well, if you're right, I won't be shocked. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Matt yeah. Chandler's village church, his series on revelation for someone that's looking to study, that would be great. And, and the main takeaway that it's actually really good news. And people, mm -hmm. people get hung up on that a lot. And yeah. I feel like uh, when you hear Revelation, it's like the scary one. Yeah. No, it's actually the story of God winning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we yeah. win. Yes. And so that's very good news. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's good. Very good. Um, our girl Tori has asked a few questions. This is her last one. What has been the most rewarding part of starting Red Rocks? Did we shout out Tori and Morgan's small group yet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Run it back. Yeah, that's we'll awesome. run it back. <laughs> Ooh. Say, most rewarding what? Uh, most rewarding part of starting Starbucks. Starbucks? Starbucks? <laughs> well, well, probably. Well, we're billionaires. So. <laughs> probably the growth. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why yeah. I said that. Red Rocks. Starting Starbucks, Austin. <laughs> starting Starbucks. Starting as, well, oddly, Starbucks and Chick-fil-A both mentioned today two of our sponsors. So yeah. oh, nice. that's cool. Yeah, uh, that's really uh, athletic good. Greens. Any update on an Athletic Greens, by the way? Uh, AG1. No. We, we got to check in on to, that. Yeah. yeah. Um, go ahead. Uh, I think our first time multiplying our second campus being at the Lane Murray unit, mm. um, that was something that Scott Brugman, who's a, a huge mentor of ours, um, spoke into us at the very beginning yeah. of this is wait yeah. till you start to, to multiply, yeah. um, and letting God, uh, letting this second campus happen mm. at a prison yeah. is like a very, very cool thing. Yes. Love that. Yeah. Um, w w my favorite, one of my favorite times of year is Kingdom Builders, and I love getting to give a report of all that we get to be a part of through our resources um, in the city, globally, churches being planted, reaching unreached people groups, that kind of stuff. That our dream way back when we were in college was to be able to help build something that would truly change the world and have kingdom yeah. impact on a magnitude that we couldn't on our own by any mm -hmm. means. So getting to see some of that fruit from this whole church body. And then also I would add on to that, not just the resources, but the people that serve. Yeah. When I watch somebody treat someone else that's new with like hospitality and invite them into this family, mm. and it's they're not doing that because we ask them to. They're doing that because they want that person to know Jesus and have a, a family. Those are such rewarding moments for me. Where I that's see people so clicked into their purpose and growing the kingdom and that we get to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Pretty dang fun. The other one is when one of our key partners, strategic partners in the 1040 window, reaching unreached people groups, when he stops by about once a year, yeah. just, we're just good friends with him. Yeah. Um, and then he just tells us story after story after story yeah. about how... Baptisms in Afghanistan. Dude, and, our like resources are, yeah. are having that impact. That's always a fun day. So cool. And baptism weekends. <sighs> Those might be the yeah. all of that in one day. Oh. That's our concluding answer. Yes. Baptism weekends where you get to see the stories of life change mm -hmm. that God has chosen this church to use as a vessel to make happen. That's yeah. the answer. The best. May, we got May 4th and 5th. Yeah. It's coming up. Shout out again. Shout out to Tori and Morgan Small. <laughs> <laughs> and and maybe maybe someone's getting baptized you. in that group. Oh, oh let's hope. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's hope. <laughs> All right. This one's for you, Ethan. Uh, what is your Enneagram? <laughs> <laughs> Why just me? 
Because nice you Kayla. love the Enneagram so I, I do much. think the Enneagram is helpful. I just think people get so obsessed with personality things, and then they use that as their cop-out of like, oh, I'm an Enneagram 5, so I can't help you with that. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? You're a human being, though. Were, were you yeah. quoting me? Oh, you are an you Enneagram 5. Sorry, I should have said 4 okay. or 3. Uh, 7. You are seven. Enneagram 7. Mm. You are, yeah. Yeah. What are you? Make You're the five? most of life and avoid pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at all costs. Uh, a five with a four wing, so investigator. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I love, I love to learn. I love to, it, it takes me a while to process my emotions, process how I feel. Mm-hmm. And I usually create things to help me, uh, communicate them. That's Maybe. good. I think Ron Swanson's this Enneagram five. Shout out to Ron so Swanson. That's cool. Gosh, he's you. the best. Good for you. What a great character. But I do think that stuff is helpful. Yeah. The point of that is it's, what do they say? It's to show you the box you're in so you can keep growing out of it. And yeah. I feel like everybody hears that and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But, yeah, but then they just stay in the box. Stay in the box. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Nice. Um, what is the hardest decision you've had to make as a pastor? <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> Go ahead, E. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I haven't had one yet. Mm. <laughs> I'm sure that we'll have to make a tough decision yeah. someday. Um. Wow. I mean, th- some of the hardest decisions are just tough conversations with people. Yeah. I think of yeah. times where you have to tell somebody like, hey, this isn't your, you can't be doing this right now. Yeah. This, you're not in the right place right now. Um, I need to help guide you out of this role or whatever it is. Uh, those are yeah. the toughest moments because you love people, but sometimes you have to be the voice of reason and also say the hard truth that people may not want to hear. Yeah. Um, so maybe the decision that is needed, but the decision to be that person and say those hard things is probably, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would say the same thing. It's, it's a really hard, uh, space to navigate is how do I show this person that I love you mm-hmm. and I love you enough to say this. Yeah. And what I'm about to say is going to sound very unloving mm-hmm. to you, Yeah. but I want to try to help you see that this is actually the tough love that you need right now. Yes. Um, knowing when to, to go there mm-hmm. and when somebody is ready. It's like being a shepherd is you have to understand when, when the sheep is ready to be led to, to right. the next part of their journey. And it's, yeah. I don't get it right all the time. Uh, in fact, I've gotten it wrong yeah. multiple times. Yeah. Um, it's hard, man. It's hard. Yes. Very good. Thanks a lot, Kayla. Yeah. Thanks for, asking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thanks for a great answer. Um, so our girl, Krista, she asked a question for you guys. She said, as best friends and co-pastors, is it tough if you ever disagree theologically? Wow. How do you handle it? That's a good question. That's a great question. Well, I think there's there's two layers here. Let's take out the word theologically for a second, and then mm-hmm. we'll, we'll throw that back in. I think, in general, <laughs> the three of us have had to get really, really good at disagreeing mm-hmm. well. It's like anytime we sit down to make a decision, you think about a Venn diagram with three circles, it's like all three of our opinions coming together. Yeah. And there's a, oftentimes there's a ton of overlap. Mm-hmm. But there's almost always some not overlap for sure. And so learning how to how to navigate that um, has actually pushed us to become even closer friends yeah. and, and better friends and, and, sure. and really brothers. Yeah. Um, so Agreed. so that's been that's been I think that's the harder one. Theologically, we're, we align pretty well. Yeah, I think that we have grown our theology together over the years and yeah. we've helped each other grow. And mm-hmm. on the most important stuff, we're all on the same page. Otherwise, we right. wouldn't be doing this together. There's other tier, lower tier issues that we may have different opinions and thoughts mm-hmm. on, but that's never, I think, for us contentious just because we're all trying to learn and grow together. So it's more of like, well, what do you think? Because I'm not positive about this Dude. hundredth tier issue thing, but let's let's talk about it and learn more together. That's so uh, good. We also had a crash course that has made it easier for us because we lived like in the same room. We lived in the same house for two years and then the same room basically for a for year. A year. Um, and so we had to learn like the pettiness of, like just daily life stuff of mm-hmm. habits and annoyances and stuff all the way to like our deepest, darkest stuff mm-hmm. to talking about God and theology and stuff. So to the, the big insecurity that we always laugh about was um, there would be all these opportunities to preach throughout that, that mm-hmm. year, but it would always be like, okay, one person gets to preach. Mm-hmm. And at the beginning of it, it was always all of us wanted to be the guy always. Oh, it's yeah. just like how we're wired yep. and to really let God break that pride out of us yeah. where where I'm truly at a point where it's like, if Ethan preaches a great sermon, that's mm-hmm. a win. 
That's right. not a, that's, yeah. I don't, <laughs> it's a win, win, win. Right. Um, yeah. It's, it's not a zero sum game. Yeah. We became a team. Yeah. Yeah. And a true team, for example, the Denver Nuggets. Uh, they, but this, okay, this is actually true. <laughs> what makes Nikola Jokic so great is that he wants to win and he actually celebrates more when his teammates succeed and he's uh, actually dude. the one distributing the ball to make that happen. And so a win for him is a win for me is a win for him. And the NBA is full of egos that a lot of teams don't operate like that. Nobody knows how to guard him we because to, of that. We were a team that was kind of like, I want the ball. Yep. And we have grown over the years. Yes, and so still, I'm like Jokic. <laughs> you can be Murray. <laughs> no, I want to be Aaron Gordon. Um, <laughs> oh, dude, the best. But, the, but when you start, I think because we've grown into a team that's like, hey, we have a goal that is beyond any of us individually. Mm-hmm. We're pushing for that. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it. That's the way Jesus operated. That's the the secret sauce to kingdom impact is not needing yeah. self to be at the center. Yeah. Love it. Y'all do it well. Oh, thank uh, you, Kayla. Yeah, Kayla. No problem. <laughs> that was genuine. She yeah, did that. There was yeah. no sarcasm there. That was nice. I don't know what to do. With, I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, get to the next oh, question. I'm uncomfortable. Uh, ask us something about I can't stupid, take a compliment. Ask us how stupid we are. Oh. <laughs> Humor videos. <laughs> Ethan out in the field. Ah. Ah. <laughs> It's on rollerblades. <laughs> is this guy serious? He a pastor? Yeah. Church could be fun. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By the way, we were laughing. To, uh, the video that we put out on Thursday <laughs> is just one of the funnest days of the year. Oh, yes. and then literally, <laughs> and great Jacob. job, Jacob. Jacob for, yeah, you're so brilliant. Well, we, with that's all us that. That's at our best. Yes. It really <laughs> is. The dyna- yeah, that's, that. that's Stockton and Malone. Yeah. We can create uh-huh. a ridiculous thing together. But yes. the very next day was Good Friday. So yeah. the very next like time our church interacted with us was Ethan and I on stage talking about the cross. <laughs> just so yeah. serious. And so they're just serious. like, the last time I saw these guys. It was on a rollerblade. <laughs> green screened with kids sunglasses. Pool. On. This guy's sitting in a pool. Yeah. Oh, tell them about the story where you were about to have a meeting with somebody. Oh, oh my dude, gosh. So, <laughs> so this, thankfully, this guy, Chris, is awesome. He's a really cool guy. He had scheduled that we were going to meet that afternoon. <laughs> and when we scheduled it, I was like, it's Easter week, but I'm not preaching. So I'll, you know, yeah. Yeah. whatever. That's fine. And then we started filming the newscast in the morning and I had seen it on my calendar and I was like, oh, we'll be done by then. And then I lost track of time. <laughs> I'm in the bathroom changing into my swim trunks and my shirt. I'm literally putting swimming goggles the, on. To to do, if you haven't seen it, to do a scene where we're talking about carpooling and we have a literal car yeah. or pool in a car that he's about to get into. I'm, I'm putting floaties on and goggles. <laughs> and other Ethan runs into the bathroom. He's like, hey, man, there's a guy here to meet with you who's like dressed professionally. Like he's coming, yeah. coming from work a meeting. <laughs> As an adult. And he's an he, adult. He is professional. And he is professional. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I didn't realize it was two. So thankfully, I took the goggles off. <laughs> but I sat with him in the meeting in swim trunks. He's really cool. He did Young Life for a bunch of years. So he was like, he, this is all. he was like, I'll come watch if you need to film this stuff. I was like, let's meet first. Because <laughs> yeah. st- I still got a rollerblade and be in a golf cart and all this stuff. Yeah. But uh, really shout good. out to Chris. That is so much fun. That was it's the best, that. dude. Those days are so fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those ones where you're like, can you believe we get to do this? Yeah, <laughs> truly. Yeah. And yeah. People like some people, maybe they were like, okay, this, yeah, maybe this church actually can have some fun. Yeah. yeah, we can. That's what I do love about our church. Yes. We can laugh on that Thursday and just be ridiculous. And on Friday, we can that's flip it. and we're going to talk really seriously yeah. about the most important stuff. Yeah, because the truth is, Friday is the reason we're able to have fun on Thursday and every other day. Whoa. Job, Ryan. Whoa. Whoa. Clip, <laughs> clip, clip, snip it. <laughs> tag, tag me. Oh, yes. <laughs> Ethan would talk Colorado Rockies <laughs> and Nuggets and Abs. Nuggets, Abs, yes. Broncos, yes. Bus. Underscore, underscore. <laughs> Welcome, Warren. Uh, well, speaking about the Nuggets and the Avs, uh, who do you think is the most likely to win this year? To oh, win it all. Is that a Zach Johnson question? Oh, yes. Sh- Shout out to Zach. Yeah, uh, not, nope. Not going to be the Broncos. <laughs> um, the Nuggets, um, most likely to repeat. Cheering for both. Of course. But I just, I just think the Nuggets are playing really good basketball right yes. now for all the aforementioned reasons. I would love for the answer to be both. But if I have to choose, I agree. Nuggets. How hockey hockey playoffs is such a it's gauntlet. So hard, man. And not that NBA isn't, but the Nuggets are just dominant enough that I think they they can handle any team NBA that comes shot. at them. And yes. the Avs are gr- really good, but I think they have a harder road. That's fair. That's very fair. But, as long as Jamal is healthy and good to go. Right. Of course. <laughs> We're just resting him. Uh, here's a fun one. What's your favorite sweet treat? An undercooked chocolate chip cookie. Mm-hmm. Yep, mm-hmm. I would say that. And if I'm feeling crazy, two cookies with ice cream in the middle. Oh my gosh. Chocolate chip. At Costco, they have now 
big chocolate chip cookies. They also sell ice cream, Whoa. so you can make. I can make it. You can. They also it. sell ice cream. I'm glad they. I, so here's my thing about desserts. <laughs> I feel like, like at the cafe or whatever it is. Oh yeah. Chris's favorite restaurant. Oh, I feel yeah. like the harder you work on a dessert and the fancier you try to go, the less good it is. Yeah. So the basics when it comes to or dessert. Or at like really fancy restaurants, they're like, here's this ten ingredient, crazy sounding like, thing that I'm gonna light on fire, or whatever. You're like, cool, but this was two bites. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a chocolate chip cookie? Do, we, do you have like yeah. a cookie this big? <laughs> the way I the way I make chocolate chip cookies, I probably permanently have salmonella. <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> Me too. For sure. Permanently. So we have gotten a lot of questions on singleness, and mm-hmm. luckily we have the author of Single Today with us today. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for being here, Ryan. Um, so I was wondering if you could speak on that. Somebody asked, why don't we have a Red Rocks dating app? Mm-hmm. Uh, why don't we have a mm-hmm. singles ministry? Mm-hmm. So would love y'all's Red Rocks else. dating app. Yeah. that's an, that, we're, you, just, we're just trying to get the Red Rocks app to work. <laughs> you start, and then I'll go. <laughs> um, I'm not opposed to that to having events or things for singles to meet each mm-hmm. other. Cause I do agree. I think that church is the best place you can meet somebody. And I know it's tough, especially in a lobby like ours. Um, there's a whole lot of people, there's different services and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so we do get asked a lot about singles events. I tend to think of the liability side of things just cause I'm a very logistical person <laughs> yeah. and I know how many creepers there are out there. And I've already had to sit down how many guys in this church and be like, Hey man, this place is not a pool for you to come and try to sleep around. Um, and mm-hmm. if that's why you're here, I'm actually going to ask you not to be here. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I foresee all of those problems coming, which is why I tend to resist that because mm-hmm. I'm going to have to put out a whole bunch of fires because they're created by that. Yeah. And I see church as a place for family and marriage and all that kind of stuff. Um, but on the priority list of things and events we do in the bandwidth we have right now, that to me is not a top tier priority because it organically can already happen through groups, freestyle groups, through sports, through being a human being and talking to other people and Good. getting to be a part of community and things like that. So not opposed to that. There will never be a Red Rocks dating app. I can tell you that just because right. we wouldn't have the res- we wouldn't put resources to that, but mm-hmm. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> There's already apps for that. Um, and that's not our call ultimately as the church. Yeah, that's great. So um, I'm super passionate about the topic of singleness. Obviously, Ryan, we get it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, but one of the reasons I, I wrote about it is because I believe that the church needs single people, um, that, that single people have a, a whole different perspective on God that we bring to the table. Um, one of the reasons I'm super thankful for Red Rocks is because you always give me a, a seat at that table. Um, and so a huge proponent of that with all of the like podcast interviews that I've been doing for the book coming out, um, one of the big questions I always get asked is how can the church better serve single people? And I love that question. I love the heart behind that question. I want to flip it. The real question for me is how can single people better serve Mm -hmm. the church? Mm -hmm. Um, Our mission is to make heaven more crowded, not to set up ways for single people to meet each other. Now, that's a great secondary thing that may happen. That's a byproduct along the way. But... My question to you would be, as you heard me say that, single person, what was your reaction? Like, did you get a little offended or were you like, yes, agreed, let's make heaven more crowded and I want to find somebody else who wants to make heaven more crowded as well? Because that answer will tell you a lot about where um, a romantic relationship is uh, in, order, in, in, your, in the, the order of your heart. In other words, are you putting God first and the desire to be married, which is a great and pure desire? second or do you have the are you out of order do you have the order wrong and so that's um the the first thing i always say when people ask uh, about that is hey what team are you serving on Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how are you serving the church and ironically not ironically this is how it works in god's economy Mm -hmm. when you are serving at the church you're going to find yourself serving alongside lots of other single people Mm -hmm. and as you are running towards making heaven more crowded you're going to look to your left or right and see somebody else running towards the same goal and that's where like the really good Mm -hmm. um pure relationships can start the hard part is and then i'll get off my soapbox uh is that takes a little bit of courage and that takes you stepping out of the boat and um, doing something that's not very popular these days, which is like initiating conversations and being bold enough to introduce yourself to somebody and having questions that you're ready to ask them to have conversations with them. And so um, I, I know that's scary and I know that's hard, but but um, I'm a huge fan of pushing people towards doing that more. And so the question is not how can the church serve single people. The question is how can single people better serve the church. That's good. Very good. At the men's breakfast, I was talking about how guys will come up to me and be like, 
man, we need some co-ed groups. And I'll just tell them, you don't. (laughs) <laughs> because you just coming up to me shows me that you just oh, want a co-ed dude. group, not because you want to be discipled and grow in your relationship with Jesus. You want to meet some girls in this church, which is not a bad thing, but that's not the point of a small group. Oh, dude. Um, and so I think, yeah, sometimes, and that's normal. People want to meet somebody and that's totally fine and great. But it be, it just feels like over and over we're telling people like, okay, that's great, but that's not the point of what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. That's a byproduct of it. Yep. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But how can the church find me my spouse? Yeah. And that's not ultimately what we're yeah. Yeah. And, and and in a way we actually and we also have like a volleyball league starting and like there's yeah. all these we're there's setting all up these ways. so many ways for you to, yes. to have community yes mm-hmm. yeah. and we have a lot of couples that have met here mostly through serving together yes mm-hmm. serving on teams and getting to know each other through being a part of the church which so, is yeah go to the yep. welcome party start serving after, yeah. yeah after every service this weekend and yeah, that's right also <laughs> I have heard something that's cool that some uh, small groups that are like a bunch of single guys will their leaders will talk to yeah. some female leaders and be like, hey, let's have a night where our groups go out together and we yeah. all go, you know, get to know each other, have some everybody at one person's house and like a whatever mixer, whatever, meet people. Cool. So great. great man. Make it happen. So great. Go. That's very yeah, good. Yeah, and I just want to double down on the the intention behind these questions. I know it's a sensitive subject, um, but we love it. We we love that this is like huge proponent of marriage. I always feel like as like the single today guy, I get pegged as this guy that like is so against it. Like I officiate weddings all the time. I'm so a fan of it's not good for a man to be alone. So let's pursue this in healthy ways. And so well done. Let's keep working together. Um, But let's get the order right. Mm -hmm. Let's serve. Let's let's And as a church, you have to like there's the hard part of, of leading a church is that there's hundreds of people with great ideas and things that they want the church to be for them. And we just can't be all of that. Right? Mm-hmm. And so we have to, and that it might seem easy for people, for us to just put on an event or do something like, but we have to be very strategic about what we're pouring our time and bandwidth into. And we're a five-year-old church. And so we have prioritized the things that we can do that with. And so that unfortunately disappoints people at times because we can't be all things to all people. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. Um, so since I'm just a little baby, a little child, come here to you guys. <laughs> what accent was that? Is that the baby accent? Is that how babies type? A little baby? child. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm a Gen Z person. Gen so, Z? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, I know. Cool. Um, Jacob, you're a millennial. Oh, yeah, he yeah. is. Yeah. So yeah. somebody wants to know what's the trend that you miss the most? Fashion, music, TV shows. Oh, from our like. Yeah, literature? from your era. Our era. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this wasn't a trend for anybody but me and Eminem, but I went the full on bleached hair. Not like the frosted tips, but the full on. <laughs> Did you? Really, what, yeah, what in grade? like third grade and fourth grade. <laughs> and that was awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, dude. I, I thought it was so, I, I really thought, yeah, big fan of it. Yeah. Maybe I'll bring it back. I, I always wanted that. And for some reason, my parents were, I don't know if they thought, like, oh, if we let him go to an actual place and get his hair bleached, like he's going to become a bad kid or something. Yeah. So it would always be like sun in or like lemon juice that my dad would oh, like, yeah. just work to oh, yeah. sit in the sun for a while to try to bleach my yes. hair. That, that didn't sun. really totally work. No, it did nothing. And then my hair was like kind of orangey. <laughs> and like, yeah. Yeah, no. Looking back, I guess I'm grateful there's not pictures of me with platinum blonde hair. So maybe my dad was just looking out for yeah, me. Yeah, Justin was yeah. probably looking out He's for like, you. You're yeah. going to look so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't miss... Uh, like when I think of... <laughs> I think of like visors and Oakleys and... Jinkos and baggy clothes and stuff, and I don't miss any of that. <laughs> I'm kind of just like I'm just like a shorts and a t-shirt guy. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're pretty. You know, you're never lame. been super cool. You've been running in trendy. it, trendy, yeah, for a long time. I, my, my biggest era, though, Abercrombie prep. Oh yeah, that was like when I was most uh, passionate about yeah. clothes. Was like I need this rugby shirt from Abercrombie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm gonna spend fifty dollars on it. <laughs> Wish I hadn't done that. Nope. What's crazy is I feel like the girls' trends have like come back around from yeah. like the early two thousands, but the guys have not, which I don't understand. Yeah, but I like which trends? Like a lot of Gen Z, they like the Y two K early two thousands look, but you don't yeah. really see the guys. I mean, maybe some, but huh. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully, more people understand that Nike Monarchs are back. Yeah. <laughs> Here's where I think fashion is heading. Where? I think fashion is heading away from trends and more towards people deciding for themselves what looks good mm-hmm. and not feeling like they have to fit into a particular box and then move three months later to be more this right, style. Right. But more of a every outfit has its own like unique way that it looks best. And so roll with whatever looks best. That's where I feel like we're heading. Ryan what does Jerry Seinfeld say? 
Oh, it's dad's so good. dress, the way they dressed the last time, last year they were happy or something like that. <laughs> last year there. That's hilarious. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Um, okay. Next, if you could insert yourself into the Bible at any story or mm. any point in the Bible, um, where would you go? Right or wrong answers? <laughs> well, wrong answers would be easy. The flood. <laughs> yes, that would be bad. <laughs> Noah's neighbor. Be Noah's neighbor. Uh, the right answer, I mean, is always like anytime you could have been around Jesus. Right. Anytime you could have listened to him teach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been where he was, sat at a table with him. Second mm-hmm. to that is hanging with Paul, seeing how he plants churches and all that. Those are like the serious answers. The fun yeah. ones for me are the Old Testament stories. Like yeah. watching David kill Goliath. Being being part of David's crew would be incredible and terrifying. Terrifying, but so I've fun. never fought war, but yeah. to see that time would be yeah. nuts. Being Benaiah. Yeah, it would be sweet. Can Yeah, if you can like be one of those guys and you're just automatically cool like they were, then <laughs> that'd be a good... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, kind of on that topic, somebody asked if you could have dinner with one person in the Bible besides Jesus, who would it be? David. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Man, that's a good one. Anyone (laughs) in the Bible? Maybe Peter. Peter's a good answer, too. Just to be a fun time, probably. I bet he's a good time. (laughs) He'd be a a good dude to hang with. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He'd have some cool stories to tell. Oh, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Nice. Um, well, this one's pretty much for Doug, but maybe you guys could guess. We can answer for him, I bet. (laughs) (laughs) We know him pretty well. (laughs) Somebody asked, what's your favorite T-Swift era? I like that you directed that to Doug. (laughs) Yeah. Favorite T-Swift era? Have you heard of that era? Isn't that the name of her Yeah, like the era's, well, it's like era's tour. Like she went, so she like, you know. Oh, for like her different. Give us us a multiple choice. Oh, goodness. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know the names of an era for her. I'm not like. It's not the Travis Kelsey era. That's my least favorite. I'll tell you that. (laughs) Yeah. That guy's such a. Well, remember that question for the son of God. God loves him. (laughs) Uh, I. Yep. When we were in college, when you were a baby, the yeah. like, um, what were some of those uh, love story? Yeah, we made and a great we made some music humor video. Uh, you belong with me. Yeah, that era, whatever that. Okay, is. cool. What that was that some era? of our What's best work. Uh, you weren't born yet. No, I think it was like the one where, uh, like the teardrops on my guitar. Mm-hmm. That yeah. one. Yeah, all that. Oh goodness. That's just probably my, beginning. The too. first ones, yeah. My roommate in college would be so mad at me right now. <laughs> Early She's Taylor, the biggest Taylor Swift fan. Oh, uh, I don't know. I'm bad at this era. Well, <laughs> yeah. ask Doug to next week. Yeah, we'll ask know. Doug. Yeah. Watch him He'll know more one. than all of us combined. Yeah. So yeah. that's great. Okay. Um, last question. Wow. We you did it. You guys did it. You guys did this it. This is how, how many? 27? Wait, we yeah. have about to be just We have hour. 15 seconds left before it's an hour. Wow. Well, we did it. No, more than that. Oh, because we started later. Yeah, anyway. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> the math doesn't check out, but that's fine. <laughs> Forget I said that. Oh, cut that out. <laughs> Kidding. Sorry, Jake. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Sorry about Ryan. But this this is being filmed the day that it'll come out. What? Ooh, Maybe. Live. <laughs> Maybe. Live. <laughs> um, somebody asked, how do you know if you should be in ministry or not? Ooh. Wow. Good I question. start from a place of anybody who follows Jesus is in ministry. Um, and so ministry is less uh, about like full-time vocational ministry working at a church and more about realizing that you are the pastor of whatever classroom you are in or whatever restaurant you work at or um, whatever sports team, your kid's sports team you're coaching. Yeah. Um, and so flipping that to uh, we make disciples everywhere we go is the first step. That's good. If you're talking vocational ministry, I would ask, would you be willing to do the thing that you dream about for free? Mm-hmm. Would you volunteer for mm-hmm. a long period of time or intern or whatever mm. to learn ministry and be involved in it um, mm-hmm. before you would just expect a job out of it? And it's actually better to do that because some people think that they're called to vocational ministry and they start doing it and they're like, nope, this is not for me. This is like, like you said, there's a lot of ways to do yeah. ministry and working in a church is not it. Can I tell a quick story that goes along with that? It's up to Kayla. She's in charge Kayla? of this episode. Uh, yes, Ryan, you can. Yes. <laughs> um, my The summer after my freshman year of college, I went to Costa Rica for three months to lead mission trips. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was this huge, pivotal, life-changing time for me. The, during that next school year, I was on a hike with a friend of mine who was also in Costa Rica. And he was 
we were talking about, hey, are, are you going back this summer? Mm -hmm. And his response was, I would love to, but I think it's time for me to um, give my summer to something I want to spend the rest of my life doing. And it clicked for me as he said that, where I realized this is what I want to spend the rest that's of cool. my life doing. And yeah. so I went back and he did not. And that's great. And both options are great, yeah. right? But it's realizing to your point, oh, this is something that I would do for free yeah. and am going to do anyways. Yeah. It's almost like it happened to me. That's how I describe ministry. Like I didn't have this in my plans, but then once I had sort of jumped into it for, in like a volunteer basis in college, yeah. it was kind of like, oh, this, like I would have never thought but for some reason, this is what I think about. This is what I want to do. Doug and I moved uh, from Boulder for six months. We were out in Laguna Beach, California, interning at a youth ministry. But before we went to do that, we had two options. Uh, we had a job option that we would have gotten paid pretty well and done something really meaningful and cool. Mm -hmm. And then the other option was to go intern at our buddy's oh, yeah, yeah, church yeah. and right. do youth ministry and help him start his, his youth ministry and uh, not get paid but have a place to stay basically by the yeah. beach, which is sweet. Yeah. And it wasn't, it wasn't ultimately the beach that decided that for us, as cool as that part was. It was like, I, what I was dreaming about was like, oh, we could like write sermons mm. and we could have small groups with these teenage kids and we could put them on leadership teams and have them reach their school and we could put services together and do yeah. fun events. And I, going into college, would have never guessed that that would be stuff that would make me come alive. But it was like, that's what I really like can't help but think about. That's what I dream about. I remember Sam who went to be that youth pastor before he left Boulder. He was like, dude, I wake up and I just think about that. Like that is the thing that drives me. So mm -hmm. I think that there's something that God just plants in you and then you can't kind of escape it in a way. Good. And, um, but I would test it out by interning or volunteering or being willing to be the custodian and do the lowly parts of ministry mm -hmm. to see if that stuff because that stuff's always going to be important and need to be there. I was just talking to a few people that like really want to preach. And I was like, well, what's important for both of you and you're already doing it is that you are serving in a yeah. non-preaching capacity. Because a lot of people think they want to be in ministry because they come on a Sunday and think this looks awesome. Yeah. And getting to do that on, be on a stage, yeah. that seems really cool. And uh, it's it's some of that, but there's a whole lot of other things that so come So much with more it. to it. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. try yeah. it out maybe in a non, for the rest of my life context, but test the waters. Yeah. Good. Um, so I lied. I'm so sorry. I, I lied. That oh, was geez. not the last question. Wow. <laughs> Do we forgive her? Do we forgive her? Do we? So that we couldn't trust each other on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I got a lot to think about. Go ahead, Kayla. <laughs> okay. So this is now the last one. Sure. We wanted to tee it up for the end. So I had to come oh, back to it. Okay, That's why. Um, so somebody asked thoughts on spirituality versus Christianity and how the two intertwine. Oh, Ooh. Mm -hmm. well, if only there was a sermon coming up about <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, that's good. Um, I'm going to preach this weekend about Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. And I will talk about kind of your options of what you could believe, what camp you could go into, and what that salvation narrative is. And part of that will include spirituality, New Age movement. And um, so we'll talk about that this weekend a bit. And then next week, I think we'll dive into more of that of this spirituality next to Christianity and where do they overlap or where mm. are they different? Where is one running this way and one running this way, but they think that they're the same thing. We have a whole we'll series have coming up on it this summer, which is fun. Mm -hmm. And I think the first thing I want to say is like, like the Holy Spirit is like biblical Orthodox Christianity. And so we are very spiritual. And so the, yes. the mistake here would be to say like, no, there's one camp over here and one camp over there. That's yeah. not true. The, important thing though is that there's a couple of very important distinctions yes and for more on that be at church this weekend yeah yeah a lot of that context is what do you mean by spirituality mm -hmm. and so that takes a lot of shapes and forms so we'll talk about some of those mm -hmm. nice cool well, that's all i got we did it guys wow we did it. the annual april fools q a episode <laughs> yeah that we always do um, Thank you guys for asking questions. Yeah, that was cool. Yes. Thanks so to everybody. Important. Shout out to Morgan and Tori's small group. I yes. forgot to say that earlier. Yes. Yeah. And Corey's worship night. Be there New believer next class Friday. baptism. Yeah. All that stuff coming up. Very exciting. Yes, yes, yes. Excited for this weekend. Be at church. And to everybody that's not in Austin, we're grateful you're part of this Afterthoughts crew as well. Share this, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll be back and we'll include Doug next week. Maybe. Okay, fine. Okay.